Alright, it's Coach Nefarious, and I'll be analyzing your VOD. Let's get right into it. Okay, so, Evelyn versus Lee Sin. What does that tell us? I'm just gonna dive into it head first, the jungle matchup. Then we'll look at lanes and see what our plan ought to be, what your plan is, what happens. Alright, first of all, let me pick my tablet. Yep, tablet works. Okay. So, you got Evelyn versus uh, Lee, and you, you understand a lot about the matchups. You you have a good general awareness of the game. I just coached someone the other day, and I was like, okay, let me take an example. Let's say you're X champion versus Y champion in top lane. How do you play around this jungler? And he was like, well, I don't know. I don't know those champions. And I was like, all right, let me, let me make it simpler. What does Darius his pool do? And he was like, I don't know about those abilities. All right, well, you're you're a trillion miles past that level. And now it's going to be all about refining, refining what you already know, right? Making it more accurate, um, using that knowledge to generate particular insights, right? And we'll, we'll be showing what I mean with that very soon. So anyway, so you know, Evelyn, power farming, Lee Sin, uh, more early game pressure. Doesn't have to gank level 2, do something cheesy like that. He can do that if he wants to, but not in this meta. It's not eff that effective. He can try and do like things like red into uh, topside invade or cheeky things like that. He can even go blue into red into topside invade so that if you try and vertical jungle, he just avoided that because now he has three-fourths of the map under his control. Right, that, that's just a little fancy tactic some people use in high elo. But the most basic routes would be that you just do something like red, raptors, and route to bot side. Or red, Krugs, raptors, and then you can either see if top lane's gankable or move over to bot lane, perhaps through mid. Right? And you're probably aware of some of these tactics. That's all fine and well. But what do you do with that? Let's say you, Let's say we just skip to the start of the game. Let's see what happens. All right, I'm going to put this on mute. I heard your analysis. I watched the game once with your analysis, of course, to see how you think. And that that tells me a lot. That would tell me that tells me a lot about what you know and what you don't know. That's actually terrific for me. Um, so thanks a lot for participating in that because that actually I can't stress it enough how how much of it is not about the actual outcome, but about the decision-making process. And if I know what you're thinking, I can know how to try and change that process. That's the point, right? That's coaching. Um, so let's just take a look at the jungle starts, 130. So you see Lux and Ezreal are approaching lane. And you're already thinking out some plans, like how you approach the early game, how Lee Sin can approach the early game, all that kind of good stuff. What you would do on opposite sides. Great. All right, so you know now that Lee Sin started at his red buff. Now that is very important for you to know. And ideally, you want a certain setup that allows you to know what Lee Sin's going to do next. You want to know if he's going to go into your jungle or go like this, right? You want to know which way he goes. So there is only two options, really, right? Like his two rough options. You get the scouted out with the Raps reward, right? And if he goes over here and maybe starts invading you or whatever, like takes river control, would be nice to also have a ward here. Especially if you don't know where he starts at the beginning, you don't know what he's going to be up to, level 2. But this Raptor reward is essential, right? This one is just a little bonus. Okay, so what that means is that Right now, you have to play blind. And if you have to play blind, imagine... I'm going to stack it up like this. Let's say you had a positional game like this, right? You had two sides like this. Right? And let's say you can move diagonally onto here, right? And you can move through something. Let's say you start... Um, you both start over here. And you can't cross someone else's terrain. Let's do a little mini game, little mini puzzle, and then we're gonna relate that back to League and the game and, and, and relate these squares, relate this to the camps, to the jungler, see what happens. So, first of all, let's say um, I start over here, and Lee Sin starts over here. We're Evelyn. And then we go like this, 
Elysian's going to go for the most efficient path that he can. He's he's gonna clear in a linear line, right? In a linear line, yeah, right. Wow, nice linear line, brilliant. So anyway, so he's going to go. Let's say this is a much shorter distance than this, right? So this is slightly more efficient than moving diagonally. And let's say these are very short linked. So let's say there's a long distance in between here. I'm just gonna mark that. So this is a pretty short route, but this is like a little bit longer, right? Just imagine that that's part of the puzzle. So we're going to do that like this, like that. Okay. So this is just a bogus puzzle that's gonna make sense very soon. Anyway, so what what Lee Sin? Let's say Lee Sin, or or some enemy is going to try and go for efficiency. So he's going to go um, one, two, three, four. And then he's going to be over here, and we're going to analyze what we're doing. We're going to play for control. We're going to go to the deepest point of the map that we can control, and then we're going to take a look at what we can do afterwards. So we're going to go one, two, then we're going to go over here, right? Three, and now we go four, right? And then we just piss off and take these two. Right, five and six, whatever, six and seven, seven and eight, doesn't matter when you get these two. These these two are under our control, right? We there's no path let's assume this is all blocked off. If he tried to go in here it's gonna meet some foes that are going to crush him. So point is we end up with more camps total because we went for control over efficiency, right? So let's say he's finished ten seconds before this. But before he gets here, we're already, like, kiting this back, right? Kiting this camp back. Now, let's relate that back to League of Legends to make it not too abstract. It's a little bit abstract, but the point is, if you look at a lot of Challenger Master Yi players, they might start red buff, and then they start moving onto the map and controlling things, and then they go back to their camps and try and full clear it. Because the camp respawn time is so long, you're mostly bound by your ability to survive and control parts of the map while you farm up, rather than your ability to go auto attack, auto attack, auto attack, next camp, auto attack, right? So when you do when when you look at what most Evelyn players do, is they might, for example, take a buff and then move to the enemy side. So let's say if you start it diagonally, right? And you want to avoid the enemy controlling you, right? So let's say you have a ward somewhere so you can see them if they move this way, right? Then you know that if you go this way, you avoid them. However, what you ideally want to do is if you had no ward yet, you want to have some sort of vision control so that they can't cross over, right? And one way of doing that is to start at a buff, and if they start at the same side, you just cross over immediately. So you make sure you're, you're faster than if they ever went diagonally, right? So now you're gonna lose a little bit. If they go for efficiency, they're gonna win out on, on the efficiency battle, but at least you're like a power farmer, and at least you didn't lose the jungle early on. Now Lee Sin essentially goes for some sort of weird back and forth, like he goes bot lane and then top lane again, but the point is the general gameplay, if you don't know where he is, should be to try and establish control before you full clear. Uh, and that doesn't have to take very long. It's not gonna hurt you a lot. So if you go red Krugs, that is that is okay-ish, right? You can you can kind of do that, but but that is already like obviously you're playing for high economy and you're prepared to take a little bit of risk to get that high economy. I would say that route is is for me it seems best on champions that can afford to do it, that have easy an easy time to survive in the jungle, like Kane or Lee Sin himself actually would be really good at that route. Um, junglers that have a sort of early presence, just like, um, let's say, if you want to... Darius or something, right? Like, Darius can freeze because he already has lane control, so he's only adding to that. But you gotta, in order to do such a high-risk strat, you gotta have something to support yourself while you do that. All right, that's part one. Part one. It's a little bit about the routes, risk management, control, and how these play into each other. See you in the next one. 
All right, that's part two. So um, let's just continue what we just talked about about routing. So let me just open up a random Evelyn versus uh, Lee Sin or Graves. I don't really care. This is another meta, so let's 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 just Evelyn Challenger. Evelyn versus Lee Challenger. Let's see if we find something. Because I really want to see and drive the point home. And I don't want to see these epic KDA games. But we'll have to make do and hope that it that the most wacky stuff doesn't happen immediately. Alright. So we see here that bot lane shows. Which means releasing could have started Raptors or topside. Which means that... If she full clears bottom side, she should theoretically um, be avoiding Lee Sin. But Lee Sin can also go vertical, and for some reason there's no Warden Challenger. Which is really awkward, this NA Challenger. I have, I don't think I've ever spectated a Korean Challenger game with no Wards early game. That is, that is NA Challenger in a nutshell. I mean, honestly, that's, that's insane. This is Challenger. Like... It's actually Challenger, and they don't have a Raptor Ward to spot the Lee Sin going vertical or not. Which means Evelyn can't really make a well-funded decision, right? It shows that you can get very far by gambling. Gambling is a good skill to control in League. But why make it harder if you can make it easier? That would be my real question. So she starts out with the good old Crux Raptors. And then I want to see how she moves into her bot side. Look at, she maintains full HP, and when does she clear these? This is 224, 25, 26, 27, 28. So that's 228, let's remember that time. She just full clears like this with full HP, right? So 95 plus percent HP. So these specifics are really important, because if you change the times and change the HP values, it changes the analysis as well. So she just goes for, like, she's gonna hit the Gromp and then kite him around. Maybe not. Yeah, there it is. Coach, by the way, I mean, that's a pretty standard setup. I realize that's not too fancy. But still, that's really efficient. So she does it in, like, 316, right? Three, oh, yeah, okay, well, 14, actually. Wow. So 314, full clear. And she's in time for the scuttle. So it's like, she does a 6 camp clear in 314, right? So the Gromp was 314, right? That's a full clear. That's in time for a scuttle. And remember, Lee Sin started topside, so he should be in the bottom side. If Lee Sin... If, if we notice... Um, if, if we noticed that there's no wards, this would have been a gamble. But Le but Evelyn is 95 plus percent HP. So even if she has to get tank a Q, she's not going to have to flash and die. With your HP values, things might be slightly differently. So we're going to take a look at that and compare it. Because you need something. You need either need vision or, send, like, or you need HP. You need something to be able to make those plays with low risk. So let's take a look at that. And go back to the beginning. Wait, I don't have to go that far back. So. So, remember 228 and 314, right? And what happened here? As you can see, something happened. Something different happened in your route. And I'm not sure what it is, because I can't see the clear here. So, your clear is really off, right? And I don't know what about it is, but I know it is, right? So it's 129 here and should take one minute to clear Crux, Raptors, and Red Buff. But it takes a lot longer. And, and, and still, I'm like, I can't see the clear here. I should maybe remember that for future review. 
that I want to see the camp clear mechanics as well. I want to see point of view micro. 52. This is all good. Okay. What's taking so long? Did something reset? Did you just walk back because something reset? Oh, 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 I don't know, right? I don't know, I'm just guessing. Yeah, that that is very uh, unfortunate. Anyway, so let's just keep looking, right? So here I can see that you're on the Raptors. Hmm. Again, I can't see. I can't see. That's a big disadvantage. So I didn't. I didn't really think of that because you're half a minute behind, and that is a big deal if ever I've seen one. So you're getting chunked out a little bit, not that much, but a little bit. You're getting chunked down to half HP, right? So the thing is, you gotta practice the jungle route until you can do it. Within my goal is always. Um, within three seconds, but in a full clear, I'm fine with within maybe four seconds. Like, I don't know, you shouldn't have to waste more than a couple of auto attacks worth of time. Like, sub five seconds time waste, based on the best clear that you can find, right? So, like, let's say the Evelyn player you just saw is a good reference. That was, like, 314, right? Which was a really clean clear with a, with a leash. So, in practice tool, let's say that's, like, 320. So, you want to make sure that you're like without a leash you you this is probably a big difference but without a leash you can at least do it within three like 23 or something like that 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 would already be iffy in a real game you want to make sure you can do it within that it, because the scuttle is spawning essentially you want to be able to do it like 315 or 316 or whatever right you the closer you get to this time the more pressure you get on the scuttle if this was like a dead point then it wouldn't matter as much Right, if this was just, eh, you know, I feel like even maybe the Gromp isn't worth it. Maybe it would be more worth to just focus on the blue and go into scuttle, scuttle straight away. But that's another problem entirely. That's, again, what I covered earlier, right, where you get the most, essentially the most urgent resource before getting one that might, might or might not be as important. Anyway, so let's take a look. This is when you're half HP like this, you know you can't approach river, right? You would have to have wards. So it's like that's what I mentioned earlier. You need either you need full sustain or you need wards. So this Did you scout out the Lee? Because if you do, then there's no reason to back here, right? Because you're essentially this is near suicidal. Like to back over here, if this Lee walks up and just like does like Q auto E auto and I don't know, I think you have time for one more auto and then Q, right? And then, you know, he wants to channel his last auto, you have to try and flash, like... That gets real nasty real quick. So, you want to make sure you just step out of the jungle. And in this kind of case, if you have those wards, then you can spot whether you need to move on to the other scuttle or not. Like, what's going to happen? Or let's say you have a ward, the ward setup I described earlier is that you do a raptor ward and a pixel brush ward so you can see him in this river, right? When he takes the bottom side scuttle as well. This ward should at least be placed later on by the mid laner as well. That's not going to happen. That's not your fault. But this is how you prevent losing both scuttles. In the real game, in, in like solo queue, your goal is going to be, if you do this full clear, to try and predict uh, beforehand where the enemy jungler ends up. And essentially to always start bot side is, is fine with me. If you want to do it that way, that's actually fair enough. I don't think it's needed, but that's fine. Um, let's just keep moving on. Let's just see in part three where this is all headed. Okay, so part three. So we talked about some concepts, uh, not too specifically yet. We're going to make it more and more specific. Here we just see random, random, what I would call random inting. This is very interesting to me because you have no control, you know you have no control, you know you analyze the matchup as um, power farm to six, right? 
And what comes with power par farming? It means risk management, right? And it means avoiding risk. In this case, risk management just means avoiding risk altogether. Risk management isn't always like that, right? Sometimes you want to take initiative, take initiative so that you don't have to put yourself into risky situations. You don't have to avoid risk. You're the one creating the risk factors or avoiding the risk factors, right? Which is related or almost identical to either creating the initiative or defending against someone with the initiative. And you know, you know that Leeson has the initiative and you, you see that you're half HP. So why not? Why not move out of the jungle at that point then? That's very interesting dilemma or whatever you want to call it to me. Now, because you cleared extremely slowly, your Krugs are only going to be up at 5 minutes instead of 4.30, right? If you clear them at 2.10, it's 4.40. But that means that you, you, you screwed up your back timer. And, yeah, this is why I need the ward early on. If you see him uh, route towards the bottom side and he takes the scuttle, you would get this scuttle before he loops over if you have an efficient route. If you see him move in here, then you can get in here to the bottom scuttle and get that one. You can always just avoid him. So the the, the key is avoiding... So we went from like our game plan, right? So our game plan is just connecting the dots. So our first goal is to power farm, which we do by avoiding or like managing risk. Which in this case means avoiding it. Which in this case means avoid enemy jungler. Right, and this is all very simple reasoning, but I'm going to explain each and every single step, just for clarity's sake, if nothing else. Avoid enemy jungle, which means you need vision plus prediction, right? So, and then that follows into a reaction once something happens, right? So you kind of have... Your scenario set up, if he goes, shows on this ward, then you, and he goes over here, you go to the other side. If he shows on the pixel brush ward, or you have a deep ward in here, ideally, right, then you kind of go to that side. If you don't have the deep wards, again, you only need the raptor ward to know that he's going here. That's the biggest deal. And then if he goes back in here, it's too late. Too late. Way too late. Okay. And it's also just ad hoc, right? It's like you're 50% and he's 100% and has level 3. Like he is one of the strongest champions. He has Q, W, and E, which are all very effective early on. And you're just going to get smashed. So you're just going to walk away. It should be an intuition. You should be scared shitless that he's going to show up there. Like that is that should be your general emotion, being scared shitless of the enemy jungle. That's the only right way to, to really conceptualize it. Now think about where Lee Sin should be moving next. Your your, your crux should be up. So if I were Lee Sin, I would be pathing to your crux and I'd be like, What? Why are those not up? What's going on here? Like, that would be what I would do if I were Lee Sin. This Lee Sin is not me. Um, he just moves through river because moving through enemy territory is uncomfortable. And bot lane disengage with double flashes. Epic gank setup, in his opinion. Sure, Surely nothing can go wrong there. And he should have been on those crux, right? He should have definitely been on those crux. That is how you lose the early game. If you ever find yourself in this situation, this is how challenger players end the game at five minutes against, let's say, diamond players. Because the diamond players might just stroll around here for a few seconds, and they're like, okay, I'm bolting to your crux. You can't stop me anymore. And that's it, you lose crux. You need to be there on spawn against good players, and Lee Sin, when he abuses you, like when you just walk up to him and you disrespect him like that, he should just be able to, if he kills you, he has complete control over your next camp spawns which are coming up. So, that's what should have happened, but let's just see what actually happens. You do your Krugs, which is very sound of course, that's the only thing 
you really viably can do. The fact that even in your analysis you're assessing the lane states and just looking around, observing, is a really good sign that you have that inherent drive to be aware of what's going on around you. That is very, very good. That indicates that I don't need to, like, start pulling and tugging on someone to, like, try and get them to look at a lane state, right? You want to know. So if you're limited at all, like, in a point of view, VOD, right, then I know that's probably because you're overloaded with micro or other things to worry about and not because you just don't care. All right, so this is a very interesting place. So again, you want to avoid Lee Sin and want to think about where he is. This ward doesn't do anything, right? This ward doesn't achieve much. That's not how he enters river most of the time. My my tablet doesn't want me to like use the YouTube interface or something. I don't know what's up with that. But again, you're finding Lee Sin on the same side. Your entire f like I can't reiterate this enough. Where you have to connect the dots between power farming and avoiding, right? This, this scenario right here is what you want to avoid. You never want to be on the same side. You would want to be over here right now. This, these are your solo lanes anyway. Why is he not a, Why is he not the one taking control of the solo lanes? But if you ward, let's say, if you save that ward and you use it on a camp like wolves or wolves or raptors, right? While you're in his jungle, um, that's it. If you have oracles, even better, right? You can try and avoid him searching for, me, for you and avoid him that way. So, whichever option you go for, if you execute on it, you can do it. But this, this should be a kill. Like, this is just silliness, you know. So, like, this move right here made no sense to me. And this ward as well is really, really questionable. Because that is your only source of information and it's not placed on a camp. Now he's backing off for a second here. And he backs off again, then does a dry cue. Even though he didn't see that Yasuo was on there. So like, and then he kites away from you to the the left side instead of cutting you off. You should have been sandwiched there. But they let, first of all, Lee Sin doesn't utilize his full damage. And somehow afraid of the charm, you should just tank through and let Yasuo come here. And he doesn't sandwich you. He actually ends up on the far left side. Uh, where he has to use his war jump and he's still only even with you. That's a very important one to take away from that one, is that you would have died in, under better circumstances or better micro of the enemy team. Because you're not avoiding him, you're actually looking for him, in a way. Like, you're barging through river. If you wanted to ward, you can just ward and piss off, but... That's not a very proactive ward, it's not gonna cut off the escape route towards... But really, if you think about it, what does Lee Sin want to achieve? Like, he can gank mid lane or bot lane, right? Um, he could also be controlling the top side, so this ward is very minimalistic. If Ideally, if you scout him out, he, then the laners know, oh, he's on this side, I need to ward right now. So you're the one to scout him out, because you have the spatial you know, tools on the map to get deep into his jungle easily. And then the other players are going to be like, well, we're close in lane, so we're just going to place the wards directly around our lanes, right? And that way you, you both utilize your resources right to the maximum extent all right so this is nice nice little pick up there and again you move to the same side and i find that so hilarious that you're walking straight through river here um under worse cir circumstances you would be dead before zarath even gets to you like if 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 lee is challenging smite and he just walks up here let's say he had flash like you would die like Obviously, you have flash as well, so the circumstances aren't that bad. You gotta realize, though, this is one of the worst situations you could be in. This is already um, riding the margins very much. Like, Sarath has almost no mana. You know what mid laners want to do when they have almost no mana? They're gonna shove the wave and base. And you can be like, hello, I want help over here, but half of your mid laners... Whoops, I cut off there for a second. So, half of your mid laners won't care, and the other half just won't have mana after that push. They don't want to ruin their entire wave because you want to scuttle. Like, their back timer and, and, and appropriately slow pushing that wave into the turret completely does not take, um, or takes priority over your scuttle. So this is a, a, 
again, very, very risky. And if Lee Sin looks at Xerath here and says, oh, he's clearing this wave and he has no mana, he can just start chasing after you, and you're going to lose another flesh here. And then what happens is he can keep running on the map to your next resource. He can then move to the red buff, just like he didn't, didn't do last time. Again, he can move into your next open resource, whether that's red buff or Krugs or Raptors or more of those combined in one go. And let's say he's going to be level 6, you're going to try and walk into your jungle, he sits in a rush, boom, you're dead again. That's how you see those true domination games and challengers sometimes, where someone just doesn't get any camps for like 5 minutes. This is how that happens, right? When, when you get put in a bind because you're on the same side and get smashed, and then you have to go to the opposite side, but then you give Lee Sin more time. Because either you have to go base or you die. Which is really just a variation of going base if you think about it, right? Just walking to base slowly, you could uh, visualize that that way. Um, that's something to pay attention to. Avoid, avoid, avoid risk management. Because it's nice against this jungler that you didn't. He didn't steal your Krugs. He didn't steal stuff. He just got flat. The flat three hundred gold is not the biggest deal. That flat three hundred gold, you can overcome that. It's not a problem. The real problem is that bind that I'm talking about. The fact that he steals your jungle away. Now you're completely flat on your belly and you just don't have anything to farm that's a real deal and then you move on to the map if they have deep vision and they saw you boom there they are with like a two man and a brush or something like that's gonna happen as you climb people are gonna try and abuse the assassin while they can so be mindful of that obviously i'm taking into account i'm, I'm essentially analyzing it from the perspective of Proper gameplay, high elo gameplay, not like I realize that you're not playing against the challenger Lee Sin here, but the more you want to climb, the better it is to understand how things should be played. And if you ever want to make a risky little play there because you know you can, that's fine, but it's actually going to happen surprisingly little. Um, risk management is the way to go generally, even if you know you're up against the bad players. Lee Sin like this is more unpredictable in his pathing as well, so sometimes that can actually make it harder for you to to select a route. So it's not as easy as, well, they're bad players and therefore I can do XYZ. Obviously I'm just uh, talking hypothetically. So. One more point. I like your back timers. I like your general... Like, I feel like you have a lot of things set up that some other people in your elo do not have set up. That's going to take them a lot of time and effort. But so far, I noticed just in terms of general strategy, yeah, you get it, you get that you need to power farm, but how do you execute on that? How do you actually make sure you get the power farm to level 6? Yeah, yeah, you clear efficiently, you do a full clear. But in what direction and what do you do afterwards? You should immediately be pissing off. Um, if the scuttle isn't available, if he's like potentially on that side, you should be hopping to the other side if you're fast enough. If you somehow wasted half a minute, then you have to go base and just reset and do it again. Like, get that next scuttle, Contest, see if you can contest that one with the lane setups, otherwise you could keep farming. If, if Lee Sin might be on this side, then you're gonna go to this side, right? If he might be on both sides, you're gonna tentatively walk up and ward deep, right? Deep. You really want to get deep in there. Like, you're pretty good at deep, going deep. Um, it's not, like, it's not more dangerous in a way, right? And so you get oracles in a pink ward. That would be a setup. So you get a pink ward behind enemy lines here. And that's it. Like, you have the warm plant available at 530 guaranteed. You have flash if you need it. Now, if, if you flash, at least you have pressure in the jungle. Like, you flash out with full HP, for example, because you know you need it eventually. Might as well flash at the start. Like, you're going to have different risk factors in that situation. Alright, so while we talked about that, a uh, different situation occurred here, which I want to take a look at. So, if you ever find yourself in this situation, right, so look at this. Did you see that? You want to determine your response to a skill shot. So you get one kill. You assess what the lane state is like here. And he says if you can walk out directly here or not. Can you walk up here directly? You see here that if she aims at center mass, it's pretty much a guaranteed hit. So then you loop around. And obviously they're going to walk straight to the turret and not wobble around randomly and do random stuff. 
right? So this is a complete waste of time. And even worse is that if you go in here at this point, she shouldn't be walking up to you, right? She She's just like doing one input in one second. That's micro right there. Just one input in one second. No quick wiggling, tentatively walking somewhere, wiggling back. No, just, just one big blop of a move command. That's how you want to do it, right? So that is, that is the... Essentially, it, if you waited here for a second and saw what they did, I didn't understand, but... It's really strange to me that this would even not result in your imminent death with an Ezreal Heal Flash, a uh, Lux Snare. It should be your death. So this is not a sound play. It, it, it worked out in this case, or... I mean, really, it worked out okay, right? Because you're getting gold. You're trading gold with uh, Ezreal or Lux. doesn't, like, that favors you pretty clearly. So that's not the problem here. It's the fact that you have to assume that they're going to play it correctly, even if it is low elo. Essentially, you want to analyze the worst case. That's that's the very definition of risk management, right? Assuming the worst case to a reasonable extent. That's, of course, where all the magic lies. What is reasonable? So. He woke up. Now the tides have changed. You're the one with pressure. You can see that Lux here, like, tank, tanks for the Lee Sin, but doesn't realize he's gonna proc the charm anyway. Alright, let's skip ahead a little bit. And from here, the game just gets a lot easier. The mid game's not too interesting. Let's say the Lee Sin here is three levels down because he's doing quite literally nothing like he never went for like red crux raptors and then moves on the map he didn't do any efficient routes he doesn't do let's say full clear tries to beat you um or like tries to control the side of his that he thinks favors him let's say you both want to control the same side and he can just control the strong side and do a full clear just like you something like that he didn't do any of that he didn't show any creativity to follow through on a particular game plan he just stumbled stumbled around in his jungle didn't accomplish much and now you're just generally stronger. And you're abusing that very heavily. So you, as, I, as I said, it's not all... Um, it's, not, it's not all... Pain, tears, and bloodshed. It's, it's... Some of these things, I really like how proactive you are. And how you're... Essentially using cold calculation rather than... Oh god, it's an enemy jungle. I never want to touch it unless I have a three man. A lot of people are like... Yeah, but, but you can't invade if you don't have priorities everywhere. It's like, what do you mean? Do you think their entire jungle is loaded with pink wards that you didn't see on your way to... Uh, live? You know, just have some... Have some faith, right? So, I like that you abuse your advantage here, abuse your lead very heavily, try and convert it way harder than the Lee Sin tried to convert his lead. I think if you were Lee Sin, you would have absolutely smashed yourself. Because you would not, you would have gotten straight, I wonder if you would have gotten straight to your own Krux if you were Lee Sin. And then if you go to your Krux, you get smashed there again. So in, in theory, you would have to go to his Raptors, right? That would be some next level, next level routing. But the point is, both of you are not really using a lot of routing foresight. Like, where's someone's gonna be and what do I gotta do with that? Okay, here you're just picking up kills. So, yeah. Very clear, profound strengths and weaknesses. You're not just generally shit at everything like some people are in certain ELO brackets. Uh, I see that a lot. Just people who are generally just... Yeah, they kinda know most abilities a little bit, but they don't really know. Like, And yeah, they kinda know strategy, like... You know, they know that Crux give you a lot of experience, but, you know, they don't have any strong feelings on it. Or, But st still, you gotta, you have a big step. Your biggest thing is that you failed to execute the most core aspect of executing your early game plan, which was avoid Lee Sin. That would be, if I had to make a top three, that would be number one, right? It's like, let's say, number one, avoid Lee, and... Number two would be applying some sort of control so that you can actually, you know, farm your jungle backwards then. And that's it. Alright, my time's up.